Naja, ich glaube, die größte Gruppe ist die, die irgendein Englisch spricht. The biggest group is, I think, people that speak some English. There is another group who speak only English, and there is a very small group of people who speak just German. Nur eine kleine Gruppe spricht noch Deutsch. And um, I find translating in the background quite irritating. Uh, that's what I'll try to speak in both languages. Also, ich werde probieren, in beide Sprachen zu sprechen, weil die uh, Translation sonst ein bisschen so ein komischen, komisches Echo bildet im Raum. Um, in other words, uh, with Markus, we just said, um, the talk had not yet begun, but the talk is on. <laughs> Which means the day has not has not started yet, but the talk is already on. Um, actually, I have nothing to say, but um, of course we can speak forever. Um, I think everybody would, would, of us uh, communicates communicates with living people and with dead people, and. Um, uh, the communication with the Toten, with the dead people, is also very intensive in a way. And it's because of the pieces of work that they have left us. And I uh, usually go very close to the pictures to stand the to pictures of, uh, of living or of the dead, to, spill the, to feel the frequency of their bioenergetic um, waves. Um, das heißt, es gibt so eine Art Ausstrahlung, there is some kind of a radiation, everybody radiates some kind of a bioenergetic strand or uh, well, it's waves and particles, uh, Wellen und Partikel. And um, part of these Wellen und Partikel uh, are written on the surface of a picture of a work of art. These frequencies are something like uh, bioenergetic music, which is very individual. Jeder hat so seine individuelle Frequenz. And I really believe that um, getting in touch with the individual frequency of others. Um, enlarges, enlarges, also vergrößert our... Um, our um, our understanding of um, what's the human being, what's man, what, what's it about. This <clears throat> is a nice noise, together we are a big organism, but of course there is a, um, a super organism. Um, <clears throat> but, um, But also, um, I think that it's very it's something very special to be alive. So it's a big chance, so this is a relative kind of Wahrscheinlichkeit, to uh, live with people at the same time and even meet them at the same place. Because this is a possibility that you cannot share with the dead. Das kann man mit den Toten nicht teilen. This, this ways of, different ways of feeling each other directly, uh, looking each other in the eyes and, and uh, feeling the, the, the spirit which is behind the body. I think that there are two kinds of people, es gibt zwei Arten von Menschen, roughly said. Um, solche, die uh, wissen, dass sie einen Körper haben und sich wundern, dass da auch ein Geist generiert wird und solche, die einen Geist verspüren und sich über ihren Körper wundern. Those who have a body and wonder about the spirit that is generated by it, and those who have a spirit that are uh, wondering very much about their body, the existence of it, I belong to the second type. Uh, I always regarded my body as some kind of a anhängsel, some kind of an appendix to my spirit. And uh, the older I get, the more I get the feeling. No, it's as a joke. Uh, one is as old as one wants to be. 
And um, <coughs> man ist so alt, wie man sein will. Das ist jetzt nicht irgendwie äh, nostalgisch gemeint. Oder so, ne? Aber, <coughs> Aber ich empfinde den Körper wirklich als so eine Art Kühle an. <lacht> uh, und uh, so eine Art. Uh, and, um, but that made it maybe easier to, to use. Uh, this kind of, um, I don't know what, material presentation of my spirit as an, um, as an instrument for doing a lot of things. I'm born and grown up and socialized in Bulgaria during the communism. And to so this side, at that time, there were, um, there were very selective um, approach to knowledge. Which was not the, the worst in the world, but <coughs> es ist ganz komisch, also es gab ähm, recht viel äh, Marxismus und Materialismus in a way, or everything was transpo transported through the prism of Marxism and Materialism. But um, people, I think, um, of my generation were very eager to know more or different things, uh, very curious, very interested in. And um, we found a lot of books in old libraries, private libraries, um, but kind of dissociated, <coughs> also nicht zusammengehörend, also out of context, out of uh, history context, out of out of um, the context of the science. So the, there was here, let's say, a book uh, translated by Freud, another one by Schopenhauer, maybe something even obscure, not the, not, nicht der letzte Schrei, Le, let's say some Benedetto Croce or something. So we, we read here a little bit, there, there a little bit, so it was a very incoherent uh, picture of the world, actually, of the scientific world or the world of knowledge. Or. So that's why I think that although I'm kind of or became kind of cosmopolitic uh, atheist, I still kind of from my childish years, I still stick to the, the Greek uh, mythology because Greek mythology is something that at that time seemed to me quite logical in comparison to as in contrast to Arim, in contrast to everything else that I grasp from here, from there. And um, even now, I sometimes am in a dialogue not only with the dead and with the alive, but also with the muses. And the muses is, of course, part of me, but I don't know who they are, but from time to time they criticize me, my work, my approach. You know. I have shown him text, I even wrote in the text the, the theme about professional and dilettante and amateur. It's a very funny thing because <clears throat> if we think that uh, love, sexual love, uh, whose big patroness is, of course, Aphrodite, and she is the goddess of the art too. Of course, it's uh, sex and, and uh, love also a kind of art. But there are no uh, lorbeer for it, are they? Are there? We has lorbeer? Laurel. laurel, no laurels. A lot of discipline, long time of work and studying techniques. But of course, technique is nothing if emotion, the emotional component is not part of it. <coughs> so eine Emotion funktioniert die Liebe nicht. Uh, maybe you can be a perfect technician knowing everything about different kinds of, I don't know, positions or whatever, but it wouldn't help much. And uh, so, um, technique is very important, because just with emotion you cannot make sex, but... Um, of course the emotional component is a stronger one, and, and it needs time and a lot of work. So. After experimenting quite a lot with this, with that, I would say I never experimented. I always tried to do the real thing, but 
Of course, I was trying with this or with that. And, um, I decided to uh, I'm talking all the time about myself, but don't take it personally. I decided to um, use art for making kind of love songs. So I think that everything I do for me is some kind of a love song. Some of them are very simple, some of them are quite kitschy, some of them are, I don't know, maybe complete, incomplete, some of them are better than others, but these are love songs. And I believe that most works of art are love, uh, post. It's usually dedicated to somebody who is very, very close, has been close to the artist. And Um, a lot of things I can say, but uh, uh, I think the important thing is that um, making love to somebody, every love act, is something like a picture. And some pictures are spoiled, some pictures are good, some pictures are perfect, some pictures become genius. And, and um, um, it's not a matter of anatomy. Es geht nicht um anatomy. It is a dance of the soul. I don't know if there is anything like soul, but I say soul for it. Es ist so etwas wie ein Tanz des Unsichtbaren im Inneren, was sich irgendwie modelliert, emaniert, manifestiert, it manifestates. And I wanted to take an example, I don't know if you know him, but this is a man with a female soul, a man with a female soul, who I admire a lot, and, uh, and whom I identify with very, very much. I just wanted to show you an example from YouTube by this old dancer, who is a body, but it's not the body that dances. It's his soul that's dancing. Well. One should um, stop eating for three days before really seeing this video. Also, man muss drei Tage lang mindestens fasten, but I hope you haven't had breakfast yet.
Yeah. After seeing this man who is, uh, we don't even know if he's a man, if he's how it is. Um, it is um, very unpassant. How is it unpassant? Not fitting to talk about Kunstmarket art uh, business uh, prices of uh, pictures and. Uh, you know, all this kind of gossip running around connected with the uh, business about art. It's absolutely, it would be absolutely out of place. And that's something that I decided uh, not to use even one minute of my life thinking about it. Also, I have irgendwann einmal entschieden, keine Minute meines Lebens zu verlieren in Gedanken oder Spekulationen über den Kunstmarkt. It just doesn't bother me. You know, not at all. That's it. So, um, what I wanted to show of my work is a film that we made last year. It's very funny because um, it was not planned to be done this way. So it's not nicht geplant. Um, but um, I, I uh, very often I collaborate with other artists, uh, which I like very much because they are people of, our, of uh, my time. This is my time, people I con I'm connected with, and we, uh, wir beschenken uns mit so einer Art Zusammenarbeit, we uh, share work, and we um, um, regard this sharing as a kind of a gift, we give to each other, <coughs> for a lifetime. So I think that uh, art is also uh, something very generous. It should be generous, otherwise it has no sense. You cannot keep your little pictures for yourself and you know, it doesn't work. So I worked quite a long, for a long time, I worked with uh, Chris Haring, who is a choreographer and uh, was a dancer himself, now he's more of a choreographer. And we all, always started the new experiment sometimes making films based on his uh, pieces he made uh, in improvisation with another artist, mostly dancers. So this is eine Zusammenarbeit mit Chris Haring, Choreograf und Tänzer. Und wir beschenken uns schon, schon seit einer Weile gegenseitig. Um, and uh, this time it was kind of not planned. And we didn't have much money, we just got 5,500 euro from Stadt Wien, which is really not a lot of money, and made an 80 minutes film out of it. So the problem is, is it professional or not to make a long film out of 5,500 euro? In a way, not, of course. For a production firma, um, production company, it is an enormous risk, and it's funny, it's just not worth thinking about it, yeah? So, in, uh, in the, um, from the point of view of a production company, it's the worst amateurism and dilettantism you can do, okay. starting such a, a risk with that amount. But on the other hand, it's quite a lot of professionalism needed to accomplish a complicated, a complex, uh, long work uh, out of a small amount of money. And of course, um, uh, of course, we worked for free, not the technicians, with a very, very small team, a very professional people, just one camera, just one tone, just one light. Doing a lot of heavy work also, decoration stuff and, and working with the actors. And uh, there was a piece actually uh, which was very, very different, but Mm, we made a free story out of it, uh, or I wrote some kind of a script based on some elements from the theater and with new elements, with actors added to it, and with some actors who were not in the piece, and some actors were not here and not there. So um, I would very much like to show you this film. It's a bit long, but. Um, it is something that is a kind of a love poem also. Uh, 
not only for Chris or from Chris to me, but also to the rest of the actors. It was a kind of a love explanation we made to, we made to each other. We filmed it, of course, on 10 days, which was a very short time because otherwise it wouldn't happen. So many things to be said. Um, what do you think? Shall we see the film? Or do you have questions in advance? Or shall we uh, talk afterwards? The film is 80 minutes of land, but it is full of, uh, it is almost overcrowded with different uh, elements we could talk about. Which 80, 80. Which film? From the very last year, from this year actually. We just accomplished it. Let's see it because, yeah. <laughs> It says uh, more words than I can say in three days. But I'm here to talk about everything you feel like afterwards. Okay. were written by the actors. The poem was written by Ian, the British guy at the beginning. The poem was read two times. Uh, Steph wrote her dialogue about the peanuts. And Bacon, it's by Steph. I wrote the, the, uh, some of the monologue and dialogue parts. Yeah like uh, the one of the mafia boss and uh, mafia chauffeur i'm very proud of there are only a few guys that crazy and i know them all by first name yeah. i want to get back go home i ask myself why what have i done but then i think why not <laughs> you know this kind of he's impressing her of course I also like the, the scene with the girl all of a sudden uh, changing to Swiss German. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's amazing. She's amazing. She's Swiss, yeah. Yeah, obviously. Um, but uh, but um, a lot of people probably cannot follow there. Why did you um, like decide not to subtitle that monologue for the English audience? Mm. Good question. Could be subtitled, of course, but I think 
that uh, piece of, I mean, in most of the films there is, uh, I've made, there is a piece of a foreign language, which some people understand, some not, like Germans would understand it, and Swiss people anyway. But I think when, even if you don't understand the part, maybe you just hear the word Alzheimer or something, and that's sex or something, yeah. so you think she's philosophizing, you don't know exactly what she's saying, but... In, in a sense, what is said is not that important. I mean, there are a lot of connotations of things um, to be eaten uh, as a, I don't know, maybe a metaphor for hunger, H hunger, as a hunger, for sex, for love, for uh, like kind of zenzucht, uh, you know, like hunger is zenzucht. Zenzucht is hunger of the soul, like no idea is hunger of the mind. And uh, so these are these kind of connotations that come from time to time, but I think the film should be understood also without the word. Words are kind of part of the body language. I mean, of course, we could take the Swiss part, leave it like that, and, and make subtitles for the rest of the English part in Swiss language could be also a possibility. <laughs> yeah, that would be even more funny. Uh, but there are a lot of, a lot, a lot of, um, I, I think, existential themes. It's not just about the erotic part, you know. It's also about <clears throat> having a certain position in a group and in a different situation like seduction or you know like the thoughts about this about that having a handicap yeah and it's also a drug film you know it's it's I think if you, if you see it in a big cinema on a big screen you feel a little bit drugged after it yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like that. Uh, yeah? There's the part about the animals. I would like to know if you um, feel a kind of animistic feel, because it's also on your painting you have the animal mask, which you could use either for kitsch effect, but actually it's too, I think there's more than that, because you had also the painting of Lucy, which is the animal you have the family with the... Mm -hmm. And I was already started a bit concerning that in the painting, and now I see that the women are talking to birds, to chicken and to no, which are, the chicken has its own very, maybe, uh, simplistic connotation, but the owl, even she is saying that she is the most wise mm -hmm. animals, but they have birds. There is a kind of, is it, are you using it in a symbolic level or a totemic level or Oh dear, that's a very good question. I mean, it's it's uh, some you know it's very funny because some uh, a lot of people use same symbols or similar symbols all the time, and they don't know where they come from. I, I quite a long time I didn't know where this bird symbolic in my stuff, especially hung up birds, come from. But it's a very 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 personal story from my childhood. Yeah. Some of these symbols are very, very private. I don't have to tell it now because it's irrelevant. Yes, but I just noticed that uh, some symbols that one uses are very, very, uh, has appeared for the first time in very, very, very early age. It just remains and, and uh, other people uh, get some other connotations out of it. Yeah. Yeah. But you keep, you, you keep the magic of, of possible symbols. Oh, no, no, it's not symbolism. I mean, it's just, I mean, she's, she's simply talking to her uh, chicken because she, she's making, she, she, she thinks that she has disappeared and uh, she, she thinks that the hen is in the egg, so it's a little bit, feels, you know, like paradoxical, like what was first the hen or the egg. So she said, let's go back to the egg. You know, it's, so it's kind of paradoxical, philosophical kind of mischief. Yeah, so, I mean, in that sense, it's, it's become a a symbol, or maybe a, a seeking access to her own mind. She's looking at the chicken, but she's not. It's not a symbol. It's a parable. I don't know what's the English word for it. Parable. Doesn't she 
find herself hmm? Hmm? doesn't she find herself also in Spain? No, she's looking for the hen that she had left her some eggs, and she she then realizes or thinks that the hen is inside. She has gone back to the chicken, and there is a certain parallelity between between this woman inside step and the woman outside with the other chicken. She has stolen the chicken and she is eating it, and she's speaking to another bird. So it's some kind of a chain reaction. These two characters from the inside and from the outside are corresponding to each other. You know, like there are many circles. There is the small circle of this perfect garden, which is the, uh, the locale, which is kind of a civilization object. And then there is a surrounding circle of aggressors, the mafia, and of this woman watching, yeah, who is part of nature. She has, I'm part of nature. Yeah. Nature is a machine, she said. I'm part of nature, so I'm a machine. And there is a big, certain, even bigger circus, which is the cosmos. Yeah? And these different kind of circles tend to intermingle with each other, you know, like the civilizatory company is becoming more and more closer to nature, and the nature is becoming more and more civilizatory, you know. This, this. But this is a uh, meta-concept, so to say. You don't know, you don't have to know these things. You know, it's just the impression is more important. It has to be kind of... <coughs> But that's what I thought while doing this. It's, just, it's kind of a concentric of circles, these different worlds. Yeah. I mean, you have to know it, of course. I mean, an audience doesn't have to. Yeah. And maybe it's not important. The important is the direct impression, directly, emotional, very, very low, not here, here. I was impressed um, by the scene where the uh, woman is singing and then the voice is a little child. Yeah. And um, it's a very sexy scene and it's, it, it makes made me frightened because um, mm -hmm. I had the impression that this, this woman was in the wrong place. Yes, she is, yes. Like, it's, it's, when, like uh, when the inner child was saying, go home, go home. Of like, course, yes, 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 exactly. I mean, even with the, with the scene with the Swiss girl, uh, dancing on the floor, it's something like a striptease or, you know, something kind of an erotic dance. For these voyeurs, they come to watch. And these girls make the total anti-show. Mm -hmm. So it is a scene that, uh, that is concerned with voyeurism, but it's also a kind of an anti-voyeurism, because they do something that is, um, that is maybe closer to their kind of uh, 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 feeling in this situation, but it's not what the guys expect. Yeah. yeah. So it is... Um, it is um, a voyeuristic scene on non-voyeurism, voyeurism, mm -hmm. or the other way around. But that's the point. This kind of mulmikas, you know, yeah. this kind of, you know, when you when you have this kind of a strange feeling, which is something like I don't know the English word mulmikas. Mm -hmm. You feel uncomfortable about something, you know. You have the feeling that something is ah, sick or so. I uh, when I see this, for me, it is you know. Then I become a Sherlock Holmes. When I feel something, some kind of mummy kind, I become Sherlock Holmes, and I, I start to uh, follow this kind, this path of this kind of funny feeling that's a bit sick, but you don't know exactly, you can't name it, you don't know what it is, and you follow this trace, and it leads you directly to the crime. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's what, of course. We do also while painting, while doing sculpture, everything, this kind of funny feeling that, that has to be followed, yeah. I always say with a Hungarian accent, Dara of Kanban Bauen.
let's go out before the sun has gone down. Yeah. Although it's a full moon night tonight. Yeah. <laughs> and we can talk on whenever I'll be here around.